Let's all stand up as we begin the celebration of Shavuot this uh, morning. Go ahead.
Let us come before God's presence and invite Him to be with us. Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Abba Father, we have come once again before Your holy name. And You have brought us into this season, this moed, to be able to celebrate the Feast of Shavuot. You have been so good to us and You have brought us this far, Lord God to be able to rejoice and to celebrate before you. You have kept us. You have sustained us. You have blessed us and prospered us during this time of pandemic. And so right now, Lord God, we are grateful for all the things that you have done. We are forever thankful for all the blessings that you have showered upon us all. And today, as we celebrate this season, may you speak to us. May you anoint us. May you pour out your spirit upon each one of us so that, Lord, we will be able to rejoice and celebrate this season with much gratefulness. And Holy Spirit, have your way. Visit us so strongly right now and accomplish all the things that you desire for each one of us. We pray that, Lord, you will always make your face shine upon each one of us. Show us your favor and your grace. May your great presence abide upon each one of us. And we ask, O oh God, that, Lord, you will move in a miraculous way that each one of us will experience freedom and joy. Let there be miracles in our midst because, Holy Spirit, you are the power and we ask you, O oh God, to be with us. And right now, Lord God, we ask that you will help us as we go into the harvest field and bring the harvest of souls. Lord, give us the boldness and the courage to speak your word and be able, Lord God, to offer these souls into your kingdom. Lead us to people who need you, those people who desire your presence and desire salvation. We thank you, God, for you are with us, giving us the boldness and the power to speak your word. And Lord, we make ourselves available unto you as we celebrate this season of Shavuot. We give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, Lord God, we bless you and we honor you. We welcome you in our midst, Holy Spirit. Let your holy fire break out in this place as we worship you and we give you glory in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody will say, Amen and Amen. Ato palapakan ng gino. May you be seated. Malingkod tang tanan. So right now, we're gonna watch a video about the season of Shavuot. So let's prepare our hearts as we watch this video. It will take around seven minutes. Hi, Andrea, Andrea Davis, Davis here, here again. again. I'm the face of social media for Zola Levitt Presents in the mm. studio with Han Mailspin. Pleasure to we be here. We <laughs> so appreciate you being here with us. I can't tell you, you have mm. got such passion and such wisdom, mm. and you are our man in the land. So Ooh. you have got you've got it going on. You've, you're just your IDF, your Aliyah Return Center, husband, mm. father. You mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. well, we want to cover. Shavuot. Oh, yes. It's, it's coming, coming up. up. Yes, it is. It's coming up. And, you know, our viewers may or may not even know what Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, right. what it is or what it means to us right. as believers mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, let alone how we celebrate it. But what, mm -hmm. what, what does it mean? What is Shavuot? Well, truly, it is really an important feast day. I mean, uh, when you think about how, of course, Jesus rose, Yeshua rose from the dead 
on first fruits, right. which is the first Sunday, the first of the week, because you know, the first of the week, and you count, of course, the entire Omer count. Right. So the first uh, of the of the week, the first day of the week after Passover yes. um, is so it's in the middle of the Passover uh, season, and so that's the very day. Now, some people you have here Easter, right? Is how, yes. how it is. So I remember I said, so what does an egg have to do with the resurrection of Yeshua? And uh, and so then then someone says, I, I don't know. I'll hide the eggs. Fine, I'll hide them. You know. <laughs> Right. That's a joke. But uh, right. I get it. I get so, it. so what it is is that the first fruits, though, it's the first grain offering, and he was the, called the first fruits from the dead, and uh, and that is so amazing that you start to count as you bring your sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, right. and uh, and so we're we're counting up to the last day. But so, how many weeks is the feast of weeks? Well, it's seven weeks. Okay. You know, forty nine days, and on the fiftieth day is a high holy day, yes. which. People say the day of Pentecost, but it's it's about, in fact, uh, I tell people, you know, if Jesus is the Passover lamb, Yeshua is that Passover lamb, and he is the one coming in the in the sound of the trumpet and Yom Teruah, yes. you know, so wh where are we in this story? Because we know we're in the Bible. We're not just reading the historical right. Bible. We are in the, the prophetic fulfillment right now, you yes. know? So I'll tell you where we are. We are within the first fruits. That is the that is the expanse of, of humans fulfilling the word of God in and through our hands and feet, doing his will, and then waiting for that great redemption. Both the Jewish people all around the world and in Israel are waiting for the geulah, the redemption. And uh, the same, that is, I believe, the messianic reign, the reign of Yeshua from Jerusalem. And uh, so that's in the greater unfolding. I'm not saying that will happen in a few days in right. the upcoming Shavuot. What I am saying is that we are preparing ourselves and doing the works of righteousness and getting these the white robes on. You ever think mm. in Revelation talks about with white robes? Well, we wear white robes right. in Israel, eat cheesecake. Uh, we don't have a cheesecake factory. Great place, by the way. Yes. Uh, but what I did, what we love is, you know, dairy, like cheesecake right. and fruit. And, uh, and we just now celebrate. the Book of Ruth. Reading the Book in, of Ruth right, as well. You remember right. the whole, the grain that played yes. a great uh, role in that story. Yes. And then her meeting Boaz. And then, of course, right. down King David, then Yeshua. Yes. Uh, that's a lovely Jews and the nations working together as well in this. And that's what we see happening in Israel. Well, the nations, yes, they will come and celebrate alongside with us, even at our center in the Galilee, my favorite place in Israel. Amen. Yeah, yeah. this is exciting times it to be is. bearing fruit together. Oh, I wanted to say this. Some people say, hey, we are the wild branches grafted in. You guys are the cultivated branches grafted. And I say, that's true. We're in the olive tree together, but really, Bearing olives, making olives, that's what really, really matters the most. Mm. Bearing fruit. That's Bearing how we fruit. prove, John 15, that we are his disciples. Amen. Haim, thank you again so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>
your glory, Lord. Show us your power. Show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Amen. Sing it, church. Amen. We 
is just free, it's free indeed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. Oh, yeah. Worship you, Jesus. And we welcome you. The sun sets free, it's free in me, and there ain't no chains that can hinder me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, see it, church. When the sun sets When the sun sets free, it's free in me, and there ain't no chains. No chains. seated for a while. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Samayak to all. Happy Feast of Shabuot. At this time, we want to prepare our first offering, which is the regular tithes and offerings and pledges. As I mentioned, this is the first offering because normally during a celebration of the feast of God, we present him a special offering. And this is related to the first fruits. And this we will do at the end of our celebration. However, one thing that we are to know about Shabuot is that this feast is connected to the giving of the first fruits, particularly from the wheat harvest. God expects us, his people, to offer him their first fruits and the other special offerings. For when we honor God in this way, he will fill up our barns to overflowing. And the verse that is connected to this is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. And I let us read this in NIV 1984 edition. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with wine. 
So let us be extra generous at this time. For this is a way that we seal up the rest of our harvest. Amen? Can I call the ushers and usherettes to prepare our receptacles? And as you prepare your tithes and offerings and pledges, we will pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name, O God, for your goodness and faithfulness that you have given us this time to celebrate the Feast of Shabuot, that your presence will continue to remain in this place. And as we honor you, God, Father, we honor you also with your tithes and offerings and pledges that your people have made. Bless the works of the hands of your people and let everyone prosper, especially this year, that let abundance be among your people here, O oh God. And they will continue, Lord, to give you praise, honor, and glory. And your work will continue also, God, to prosper in its work. Father, we bless you. We honor you and we give you thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You may stand up and come forward. Drop your offerings tight. Well, good morning, everybody. Chag Shavuot, Samiyach, or Happy Feast of uh, Pentecost. Uh, we will continue with our worship celebration immediately after I am uh, done sharing my message to you at this point. Well, this morning, we are blessed and privileged to once again celebrate this wondrous occasion because the last time we celebrated this was in 2019. So for two years, we were not able to do this because of the pandemic. And thank God we can do this again right now. Give the Lord a clap offering. Praise God. And the rest, the rest of the feasts this year, we, I pray that we will also be able to do them or celebrate the Moedim of the Lord. Now, Shavuot reminds us of two important things. First, for the Jewish people. This is a feast that commemorates the giving of the law of God, or what we know as the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel. And we know that during this time, God descended on a cloud upon Mount uh, uh, Sinai with rumblings, with uh, tremblings, and uh, with uh, uh, thunder and lightning. And together, there was a loud blast of the trumpets or the shofar. And this grew louder and louder and louder. There were voices also that were heard. And the mountain was covered with the smoke of God. And its summit appeared to be burning or blazing with fire. Because Jehovah God, the Father, descended on it in a fire. Everyone down below, the people of Israel, 
they were terrified uh, with fear as uh, they saw and heard and experienced all these uh, things. All of uh, Israel experienced the mighty God of Israel who showed to everybody that definitely He is alive. Say, He is alive. The God that they serve is a real God. And according to Jewish uh, teaching, this time God was married with the nation of Israel and they exchanged vows. God said, I will be your God. I, you will be my people. If you follow my commandments, the people of God responded uh, positively. And this also has some great importance to us who believe in Jesus Christ. How many of you are believers of the Lord Jesus? Amen. To us, the law of God or the instructions of God has uh, also great meanings. With this, re we remember the words of Jesus that he said, He did not come or I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Or another way to say that is that I have come to supply what is lacking in the law. Because the law without Christ is not complete. And kita mga Kristoanon uh, are not to live our lives without some laws or re rules to govern our lives. The Ten Commandments are still as real as it was given or were given by God to Moses. Because some people are kind of uh, different when they heard the word law. And there is a group of Christians that, that says we are no longer bound by the law. And uh, we are free people. Oh yes, we are not bound by the ritualistic uh, law. But we are still people who worship God. We still have His law in our hearts. And there is in fact one person who said, I'm no longer reading the Old Testament. I'm reading just the New Testament. Because the Old Testament has to do with laws. While the New Testament has to do with the freedom. Well, they are mistaken. At this point, I'd like us to recall, to remembrance, the Ten Commandments of our God. I'd like to read all the Ten Commandments to you to get reminded that we still are under these laws. Okay? Firstly, God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Out of the land of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. Or another way to say it, he is, uh, he alone. Okay? Wala na ilain, kundili ang atong ginoo. Number two, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Thirdly, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And immediately after uh, this part, kasi yung, yung commandment one up to commandment, uh, commandment four has to do with God. That's the side of God. And verse five down has to do with the side of man. And first thing with regard to the side of man, number five is to honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. How many of you would like to live long? Only ten people would like to live long. How many of you like to live long? It is directly related to how you honor or dishonor your parents. Okay, this is... A commandment with a promise that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor or lie or accuse your uh, neighbor uh, with uh, senseless walay basihan. And number ten, you shall not covet. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs 
to your neighbor. Now, let me say this, that these laws are still standing and standing very strong in our generation. And God wants His law to be the standard of living for all the believers of uh, the God of Israel. How many of you believe in the God of Israel? Okay. We believe in the God of Israel, and the God of Israel has given us laws. Now, we are free people, but the Ten Commandments. Jesus, in fact, repeated this in the Gospels. Okay. You know the commandments he said to uh, the lawyer one time, the rich young ruler. You know them. And he said, well... I, uh, I have done them all, but there's something wrong with this relationship with God. As far as the man's side, perfect, yeah, but on the God's side, he was not perfect. Now, the second importance of Shavuot is how it commemorates the giving or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that we read or read in Acts chapter 2. And we know that the Holy Spirit was poured upon God's baby church on the day of Pentecost or Shavuot. I just really do not know or the reason why God had the Spirit poured out exactly on this feast. But God never moves on the earth without falling, yung mga moves niya, falling into one of His feasts. Now here the believers who were gathered that morning in prayer, were all what? Baptized in the Holy Spirit. There was a blowing of a what? A violent wind with cloved tongues uh, of fire that came and separated and rested on each of the 120 believers who were mostly Jewish. Can you say mostly Jewish? Wala well, pa'y Gentiles at this time. They were all filled with the Spirit of God and spoke as the Spirit of God enabled them. But alongside these things, they were also filled with boldness and courage to preach the Word of God to the crowd of Jewish people and to the converts to Judaism who witnessed all the manifestations and they came from all parts of the planet. And what shocked these onlookers? These people was how they heard the believers worshiping and praising God in their own native language. Peter has their spokesman uh, spoke to the gathered people because they were accused of being drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning and 3,000 of them were pricked to the heart so that eventually they believed. And immediately... After that, they were all baptized. Say, they were all baptized in water immediately after they accepted the Lord. Now, this event was something promised by Jesus as a gift from the Father. Wait in Jerusalem until God gives you His gift. And such uh, turned them all to be powerful witnesses of the Lord with signs and wonders happening or following them. And to them, the coming of the Holy Spirit was actually liberating. Say, liberating. They were no longer bound by traditions or traditions of men. And the law of God is to be obeyed by the Spirit and no longer by the letters of the law. That is the difference. We still have laws, okay? But we, what, obey the laws by the Spirit, no longer by the letters of the law, because uh, the letter kill it. Freedom came alongside the giving of the Spirit of the Lord. And so, with us, we join in the celebration of the coming of the law of God, which is His Word, or His Torah, or His Instruction. And in fact, I got a little, uh, they call it toy Torah. I got a little Torah here, right in front of me. And I got the menorah, a symbolic of the Holy Spirit. So, um, the coming of the Holy Spirit will actually make us bold believers. It should make us to be bold believers. How many of you have been 
baptized by the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues. Only five people, okay? When you got filled with the Holy Spirit, that should have changed you. That should have made you a strong witness of the Lord. And we have to boldly proclaim the Messiah and His saving work. So let us then be eager to receive the gift of God. Say, eager to receive the gift of God. Type it, everybody watching, and say, be eager to receive the gift of God. Type it, everyone. And let us fulfill the meaning of uh, Pentecost or Shabbat to our generation, especially as we are, what, awaiting the coming of our Savior from heaven. Amen? And so we should all be grateful that the law of God, the Torah or the word of God was given not just for the Jewish people, but for all the people of the world. With this, we are able to understand and know God and His will. And let me say this, we are not lawless people. We are law-abiding citizens of heaven. Say, I am a law-abiding citizen of heaven. Type it, everybody, and say, I am a law-abiding citizen of heaven. So all of us, the only difference was uh, that when the law was given first, it was written, written on tablets of uh, stones. But when the Spirit of God came in Acts chapter 2, the law of God has now been what? Written on the tablets of our hearts. No longer uh, something outside our hearts. Written on tablets of stones. But right now, the law of God is in our hearts. And therefore, there is still a law that we are to abide in because this is really what God plans for everybody here. And in fact, this is uh, greater. Why? Because that now it is placed, written on our hearts, reflecting that it will be harder for us to what? Turn away from God since His law or laws are now inside of us. Hindi lina sa bato. His law is inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And if we move away, that indicates that it will be deliberate. Sinadya mo. And that is by our own uh, conscious effort, we deliberately abandon God and His Word. Now, there are uh, similar events that occurred between the first Shavuot, the giving of the law uh, by, Mo by God to Moses, and the second Shavuot. There were fire, there were uh, wind, smoke, and voices. Say voices. Some of you who have read Exodus 20 may have said there are no voices there. Well, let's uh, read this account. Exodus 20 verse 18. When the people saw thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountains in smoke, they trembled with fear and they stayed at a distance. So where do we find voices? What is interesting is the word thunder. Say thunder. Amazingly, this is the first manifestation that is mentioned here in this passage. Now, let me give you the Hebrew word for thunder. The Hebrew word is kolot. Okay? Say kolot. Di kolot, ha? Kolot. And actually, this is a plural form of the word kol. So kolot refers to languages, voices, and sounds. So kol is the word for a language, voice, or a sound. So, plural, languages, voices, and sounds. And according to Jewish tradition, or the Mishnah, the Ten Commandments were spoken in the languages of the world, so that the whole world might, might understand the commandments. And so, according also to one of the Jewish sages, see Rabbi Yohanan, that when God's voice came down on Mount Sinai, it divided into 70 human languages, 
so that the whole world might know the voice or the voice of God. But this is Jewish tradition. Say Jewish tradition. However, if you go to the New Testament, interestingly, you heard that thunder again. How? Well, again, in Acts chapter 2, we firstly read that on the day of Pentecost, there was heard the sound of a blowing of a violent wind. And uh, what comes next is the Holy Spirit enabling the 120 to be able to speak in different tongues, in different languages. And their voices uh, were heard by those around them because uh, the, the people around are hearing them speaking in their own languages so that they were baffled at this great sign. So there is a truth about Kolot that we find in uh, the Old Testament happening in the New Testament. People are speaking in tongues, in different tongues. They, this baffled their uh, understanding. But this is a great sign for everybody. But this event happened for what reason? To prepare the disciples for the preaching of the gospel. The rabbi said, yung sinabi ko kanina, uh, it divided in t- into 70 human languages so that the whole world might know the voice of God. And here, we find that fulfillment in uh, the New Testament. So this prepared them for the preaching of the gospel to all the world. And remember that uh, the Great Commission, Jesus commanded his disciples to preach the good news and teach the good news to all sinners all over the world. And so the peoples of different languages would hear the word of God. So we find this little revelation in the Old Testament and becoming a fulfillment really in the New Testament. So there is a connection between the first Shabbat and the second Shabbat that we find in the Bible. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And today, the sound of our voices must be heard by the people around us, especially uh, by our neighbors and friends that we know. And the people of the world must be able to hear the gospel. The Spirit of God is still with us and remaining in us. Amen? Say, the Spirit of God remains in me. Come on, say that. The Spirit of God remains in me. Type with everybody and say, the Spirit of God is in me. And therefore, what should happen? As these voices in the Old Testament, according to this rabbi, divided into 70 language or languages uh, for the people of the world to hear it. So right now, we are the voices that must preach the gospel to people who need to hear it. Our voices must be heard by all the peoples of the world in their native languages. Then we can offer them to God as first fruits. Remember that Shavuot is connected to first fruits. It has to do with the harvest, okay? The harvest of the wheat that we are to bring to God as first fruits. And based on my teaching in the past, wheat is symbolic of humanity. Jesus partook of the Passover, ang gigamit nilang uh, pan or uh, unleavened bread was from the barley. Which, was, uh, which is a soft grain. But wheat grain is actually a hard grain. You have to mash it. Uh, you have to pound it para lang makakuha ka ng uh, tawag dito ng flour. So God is waiting for such a precious harvest from our hands. Because we have both the Word of God and the Spirit of God in our lives. Amen? So today, let us open our hearts once again to the Holy Spirit. 
whose peace we are celebrating at this season. The peace of Shabbat is the peace of the Word of God and the peace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord touch us. May He energize us again. May He zap us all with His power. This cannot be Pentecost without the Spirit of God falling down on us in a mighty way. Let Him fill you again and again and again and be revived this morning. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering, everyone. Hallelujah. So, may I request everyone to please stand up again? How many of you are ready to worship our King again? Amen. Can I hear you shout, I am ready? I am ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, right now, let us come before the Lord and lift Him up at this point again. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We are hungry for your presence, O oh Lord. Today, we celebrate your goodness and we celebrate your presence. Consume us all, O oh God. Oh, thank you. Feel us all with your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.
holy fire burn bright into the whole world finds your love your love come fill me up holy ghost shine bright into the whole world knows your love your love let your holy spirit come come set me on a holy fire burn bright into the whole world finds your love your love Yeah. 
Miracles and wonders are breaking out. The atmosphere of heaven is breaking out right now. See, I hear the right now. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Sing all together. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Lord. 
able to sing that at the opening Lord I want us to sing Bo Ruach Elohim that's Hebrew to welcome Holy Spirit Spirit of God we welcome you we honor you hallelujah Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you with all of our hearts. Thank you, Spirit of God, for your presence among us this morning. We give you glory and honor and praise. How wonderful are you. You are a comforter. You are our friend. And you will stay with us forever. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated again for a while as I continue with uh, my message. One of the things that uh, Jews do during Shavuot, and I mentioned this to you many times in the past, even the Jews of today, they read the story of Ruth. Pentecost starts at about 5.45 in the evening, going to the morning. And what they will do all night is seek the face of God and pray. And they will read from the story of Ruth. And that's what the disciples were doing when Pentecost arrived because they were having an overnight prayer meeting. And the Spirit of God fell on them 9 o'clock in the morning. But one of the things that uh, we are to know here is the importance of uh, the book of Ruth. Her love story with Boaz took place around this harvest or the wheat harvest, pointing that this is uh, or this took place within Shavuot, the season of Shavuot. And the Jewish people have been reading Ruth for Shavuot or during Shavuot for thousands of uh, years. And we better reminisce the story of Ruth. Now, who is Ruth, basically? We know that he is a Moabite, a Gentile woman who made a decision to what? Stay and not leave or abandon Naomi, his Jew her Jewish mother-in-law, after her husband died. And she made a decision to go with Naomi to return to the land of Israel, to live there among the people of God, and to consider them as their own people instead of going back to Moab, her homeland. But what is uh, most special and priceless with Ruth is that she accepted the God of Israel to become her God. I will not leave you. I will live with you. Uh, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. That's what Ruth said. Now, symbolically, Ruth portrays the Gentiles, say the Gentiles, who would come to the fold of Israel, and that is us. We have come to believe in no other God but the, come, the God of Israel. And because we have believed in the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, and Mashiach, God joined us together with his people. So, it portrays the Gentiles who would come to the fold of Israel, who would believe in their God with true devotion, and would really and dearly love the people of Israel or the Jewish people, right? Even though we know that they are not serving God, but God wants us to love Israel, comfort her, and pray for her, because we have gotten into the fold of Israel. So this is significant especially right now that Israel's enemies are seeking her destruction. Lately, marami pong attacks, okay? Stabbing and uh, bombing. And uh, again, the threat from the Hamas and uh, the Palestinians. But we know that God is with Israel. And we got to praise God for that because God kept the nation safe. No matter how the nation's attack or try to discriminate Israel, God has been on her side. Amen? And it's very important for us to know that the blessings and the curses of the nations 
in the last days will be determined by the attitude the nations show toward Israel. Obadiah verse 15, only one chapter, the Living Bible. The Lord's vengeance will soon fall upon all Gentile nations. As you have done to Israel, so it will be done to you. Your axe will boomerang upon your head. And this has been written for uh, over 2,500 years. Okay? As you have done to Israel, so it will be done to you. Your axe will boomerang upon you or upon your heads. So this is happening. Why? Because we know that Jesus is coming very soon. Say, Jesus is coming very soon. Type it, everybody, and say, Jesus is coming very soon. Jesus is coming very soon. And lovers of Israel should always be praying for her and to be her watchman on the wall. I mentioned to you that during our last celebration of Pentecost in 2019, and even before that, that theologians believe that Enoch, say Enoch, or Hanok in Hebrew, is a picture of the church. There is no argument about that. Well, the Jewish rabbis especially believe that Enoch was born on Shavuot, and he was taken up to heaven on the same day. Or, uh, yeah, on Shavuot. And the Jews also believe that David was born on Shavuot and died on Shavuot. Now, I want you to listen my personal assumption is that this can possibly point that the rapture may take place on Shavuot or around its season. For the church really became a church on Shavuot that we see in Acts chapter 2. The church was born on uh, Pentecost. And we know we have a promise that we will be taken out of this world as God took Enoch away into heaven. Our Messiah will come from heaven and he will gather us to be with him in the clouds. Those who died with him will be resurrected and those who are alive and remaining, they will be caught up together with them in the clouds. So I'm saying that there can be a possibility that the rapture may also take place on one of the future celebrations of uh, Shavuot. So I want everybody to really realize that we have to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen? But this is my personal view on the matter. We don't know really when the rapture will happen. It's just my own speculation, but based from events and uh, history, and likewise, what we see from the scriptures. So what is happening here, sa ating meeting this morning, is very prophetic. Can you say prophetic? It is a move of God, this sign in eternity past. And I believe that the church will once again be zapped by the power of the Holy Spirit. We will see lives change. Our lives will continue to change and be transformed by the Holy Spirit as Joel prophesied, people of all ages and age groups, they will be filled with the Holy Spirit in the last days. And we know that children, young people, and old people will experience a mighty touch by the Holy Spirit. And it will be uh, done supernaturally. The church will become a very powerful entity in the last days bringing the great harvest for the Lord to receive. And that's why we need to continue that this pandemic will cease in Jesus' name. So the devil tried to hinder us for two years. He cannot continue to do that, right? I know he will come and destroy this virus. And the gospel will be given free reign to be preached again. The fact is God wants his... Uh, church to be acquainted with his presence and his glory like what we have experienced a while ago to live holy and clean and to glorify God with our lives 
in all that we say and in all that we do. And to be faithful givers in the last days. And mostly, we need to be ready and prepared as a bride awaiting her bridegroom. Say, be prepared and ready. Do we have people here? Say, be prepared and ready for the coming of the Lord. So what should the church or the Christians be doing and desiring, but what? Preparing themselves for the Lord's returning. Sadly, many of God's people, like ancient Israel, are becoming cold, and some are abandoning the faith. And they got the boldness to put it on Facebook, that they are turning away from Jesus Christ. What are they trying to do? Preachers, preachers falling into adultery, falling into a lot of messes, Many, many people are turning away from the Lord. But those who know the Lord in the last days, what? Will be strong and the, they will do exploits. Amen. Say, I will do exploits. But this should not be because we are uh, living in a prophetic time, a season and a moment that we should all get hungry for more of God in our lives. And that's what we have been singing all throughout this time. And we are to never stop hungering for our Father, for His presence in our lives. You know, it is this hunger that will change our Christianity. Jesus said, Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness because you will be filled. Okay? You will be satisfied with what? With righteousness, okay? He will satisfy us with His goodness, with His love, with His presence. Amen. When God's people ask the Father for more of Him, indeed, He will give us more of Him. I don't know with you, but we should always pray personally to our Father that He will fill us with more. Amen? Let's not be satisfied at this level. Let's go up more, more, more of God in our lives. Jesus said, when you ask for bread, will he give you a stone? When you ask for egg or fish, will he give you a scorpion? No, our God is good. Amen? Those who hunger and thirst for Him will see more of Him in their lives. And that's how we are to live our lives at this season. Because we are still spiritually in the season of Shavuot. Okay? Shavuot was celebrated for two days by the Jewish people. And the Spirit of God has been with us for the last 2,000 years. Are you here with me? And the day will be coming that we will leave this place. And everybody said? Now some people who think <clears throat> that when they ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, especially the Baptists, and they speak in tongues, or they pray for tongues, they will receive a demon. Okay? When I was a young believer, I wanted to have or to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But it took me a while because somebody shared to me, how do you know when you ask for the Holy Spirit that a demon will come on you? Magingat ka, sabi sa akin, baka demonyo ang pumasok sa iyo. Tinood ba na? God is so kind. When you ask for bread, he will not give you a stone. When you ask for fish and, or egg, he will not give you a scorpion. The devil is a scorpion. The Holy Spirit is good. Amen? Definitely God will fill us. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. 
So how can a good and loving God give a demon when his children are hungering for more of him? Such is blasphemous. Don't ever believe that. Like in this revival that we have experienced since 1995, when we got filled with the joy of the Lord, and people are laughing in church, and still we have some people here, when they get touched, they laugh in the presence of God. Is that wrong? Okay, no. That is not wrong. He will fill you with joy and complete joy in His presence. And how do you manifest joy? By being quiet? By your silence? You manifest joy by shouting and clapping and jumping and laughing. People know that you're joyful when you laugh. Right? Can you laugh? Come on. Can you laugh? Iba sa hindi na tumatawa eh. Can you laugh? Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Come on. Come on. Try to laugh, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Kahit sa una, gawin mo lang, pero as it continues on, you'll feel that joy in the inside. Amen. And some of you have to work out that joy again when you worship God. Some of you need to laugh in the presence of God because that will take away any kind of bad things in your life. Any negativity will be replaced by the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, be ever hungry for more of God. Revival and a great awakening will soon take place on the entire planet. We still believe this, though it's pandemic. One guy asked me, how can the great revival happen at the beginning of the pandemic when we are like this? Tinipigil tayo. I told him it will happen because this is in the Word of God. Amen. No pandemic, no virus can ever hinder the work of God, especially in the last days. Amen. 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 There are people who are really crying out for more of God. They are crying out to Him because they have a deep and desperate hunger for more of God in their lives. So I want us to really crave, not for the things of the world, but for more of God in our lives. Then our lives will be transformed, and likewise this world. Let us say to Him, that for our generation, we are crying out for more, for more of you, God. And I want us to open our hearts tonight or this morning for His mighty Spirit to come on us. I want everybody to stand up. And I want us to pray. I want you to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We honor your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Father God, this morning, we want you once again to come and touch us, your people. Let it happen as it happened 2,000 years ago when you send your Spirit upon your Holy Church gathered together on that Pentecost morning. Abba Father, we are not here for a show. But we are here to cry out for more of you, God, and for revival to really sweep us and sweep the whole earth. We want to be saturated with your presence. Saturate us individually. You have promised that in the last days, God, you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh, upon all types of people, children, young men, and old men. So, let your church begin to prophesy, begin to dream, and to see visions. We are dissatisfied with the status quo of Christianity. 
We are not religious people. We are people who have a relation relationship with you. We're tired of being dry. So come. As I pray, send your spirit once again. Let the river of God flow into our lives once more. Fill us, saturate us this morning, enthuse us, O God. Burn again and again and over and over again. And Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, fill us, Almighty God. And make us your bold and courageous witnesses to tell the world that they need Jesus Christ. Let us be your voices in the last days to reach the millions of people who do not know Jesus Christ or billions of people. Change us now and transform us and prepare us for the great harvest. And most especially, prepare us for the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, great Yehuba, our Father. You are loving, you are good. Fall on us, Spirit of God. Saturate us this morning. Fill us, O oh God. Fill us in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit, fall. Spirit, fall on us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Thank Him. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. We bring honor to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit fall on us. Thank you, God.
Blessed be your name. Spirit of God, fall on us. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, move among us. Fill your people, God, right now. Let your fire come down. Fire! Let your fire be released. Fire of God. Fill everybody right now. Saturate everyone. Fire! Let fire be released right now. Thank you, Lord. Rabbi say, Hallelujah! Be saturated, be saturated. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Rabbi Yaseh, Yediba Yasadeh, Hallelujah! Fire, 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 fire! Touch us, touch, touch everybody. Revive us, God. Refresh us. Touch your lives for your glory, for your honor, God. Oh,
Come and fill us, O oh God. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Let our breath sound the praise of God. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, mighty Spirit. God, thank you. Fill us, fill us. Saturate us. afresh touch us afresh Lord fill us fill us mighty Lord Jesus Spirit of God have your way have your way have your way have your way, have your way. Spirit of God Oh, we praise you, God, for your spirit. Fill us again, Lord. Saturate us again. That's in the book of Acts, oh God. Fill us, fill us. Oh, hallelujah. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah, we bless you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Send your angels here, Lord. Send your angels here, the mighty angels of God, to worship with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, Revival. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. There is no one like you, no God like you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Oh, thank you, Spirit of God our friend, our comforter, God with us. Oh, Rabbi Oh, the praises and the honor belong to you, God. Oh, Rabbi Oh, Rabbi Oh,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Thy's the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy's the glory. Revive us again. I want to thank you, Father God, for your mighty presence in our midst this morning. Oh God, we miss your presence, Lord, as a body. We miss the celebration of Shavuot for the last two years. I want to thank you, Lord, that you have saturated us again. That you have filled us again. May you always move in our lives. May you always change us. Change us and transform us for your glory. And fill us always with your joy, O oh God. There is joy in your presence. Kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Give us your joy always. Be a comfort to your people who may be down this morning. Be a comfort to those who have gone through tough times lately. The words that they, uh, they have heard, those negative words, replace them with your joy. Replace them them with your spirit thank you Abba Father for your love and your goodness thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah thank you thank you thank you hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus oh we bless you Lord thank you God Can everybody bow your heads? And those of you watching, if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, you know that you're living in sin. You got a lot of secrets in your closet. And you want to change, you want to repent. You're tired of living like this. But at this celebration of Shavuot, I'd like to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. You're not sure if you will die today, you're going to heaven. We only have two destinations, either heaven or hell. And if you don't repent and you don't have Jesus in your life, your way is down, okay, down. Or there will be eternal damnation. But Jesus came to give us new life. He died on the cross for you. He died to give you eternal life. Now I want to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus and ask Him for forgiveness, to receive Him as your Lord and your Savior. So if you are here maybe in this room, I don't know every. I don't. I can't see uh, everybody clearly. It's dark. But maybe you are here. Maybe one or two people, and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. And those of you watching, I want to lead you to a sinner's prayer, prayer of salvation. Is anybody here? You have never given your life to Jesus Christ. Can you lift up your hands, everyone? Mira Marito, sa ating sanctuary, 
for all of us are members of Praise Revival Center. Do we have uh, people who like to give their lives to Christ? Anybody? And those of you who are watching, or maybe you're here and you're shy, I'd like to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus Christ. Oh, there is somebody here. Thank you, thank you very much. Pastor Billy, can you come down here and lead these people? Hallelujah. Come down here po. Dito po, dito po sa side na ito. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you very God. much. Salamat. Naapa ba? Masi naapa na dira sa likod. O sa tunga. Gusto mo dawat sa ginoo. Anhilang sa atubangan atong dawaton si Jesus. Sige. Oh, thank you, Lord. We got four young men. Oh, Sir Billy, before you pray for them, I would like to lead those who are watching in the prayer of salvation. Okay. Thank you. Thank salamat, you. salamat. Praise God. Salamat, salamat. Hallelujah. We got a harvest this Pentecost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But firstly, I like those of you who are watching to repeat this prayer with me. And then, lahat po susunod kay Pastor Billy. Those of you who are watching, I like you to say this prayer. Lord Jesus. Come on, say that, Lord Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I come to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me. I receive you right now into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for salvation. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Sir Bill. Sige, katong nadiri sa atubangan, atong buhaton, atong dawaton si Jesus, mag-ampul lang sa Bisaya. Kita tanan, nagadool tabikos, atong kinahanglan si Jesus. So ang saad ni Jesus sa tuang tanan, nga tagaan tanya kapasailuan sa atong mga sala, tagaan tanya kagawasan, tagaan tanya o kinabuhing dayon. So kinahanglan lang, ato siyang imbitahon sa toang kasing-kasing, nga ato ang ginuog manluluwas. So dili aksidente nga naamo diri, naay plano ang ginoo sa inyo ang kinabuhi. Gusto sa ginoo nga kamong tanan matag usa na adiri, makailamo kaniya og makabaton mo kinabuhing walay katapusan. Na kumubalik man ang ginoo dili ta maimpierno kundi mahilangit ang tanan. Gusto ba tani ana? Sige so magampo ta karon sa Bisaya, sunda ko sa pagampo atong ihatag atong kinabuhi sa Ginoong Hesus ug atong imbitahon ang balang espiritu nga mopuno kanato ug mukunsad kanato. So ako hangyo ng tanan atong itaas ang atong kamot as a sign of surrender sa Ginoo nya para makafocus ta atong ipikit ang ato ang mata. So ayaw ka ulaw, don't mind the person next to you. Okay, but uh, atong itutok sa ginong Heso Kristo kani nga pagampo. Magampo tatanan sunda ko sa pagampo atong kusgo na ang tingog. Ginong Hesus, salamat si mong gugma kanako. Ka ikaw na matay sa krus, aron maghatag kanako og kapasayloan og bag-ong kinabuhi. Karong adlaw wa Hesus, akong ihatag kanimo ang ako ang kasing-kasing. Ang akong kinabuhi, pasaylo ako sa akong mga sala. Salamat sa imong grasya. Salamat sa imong dugo nga naghugas kanako sa tanang mga sala. Ginoong Hesus, ikaw ang bag-o kanako. Pinaagi sa gahom sa balang espiritu. Balang espiritu, giyahi ako sa dalan sa pagbag-o, sa dalan sa kinabuhing dayon. Sa ko ang pagsunod sa pangalan ni Jesus. Salamat Ginoo sa bagong kinabuhi ug imo nang gisulat 
ang akong pangalan sa libro sa kinabuhi. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for all of you. Salamat ginoo nga kaning mga matag usa nga naadri sa tubangan, ilang gitugyan ang ilang kinabuhi kanimo. Salamat ginoo nga ikaw mag-usab kanila, ikaw magapuno kanila sa imong gugma o sa balang espiritu. Salamat Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sir Billy, take them down. You take them down. Mike. Sige, so sa Children's Church lang, sunod mo sa ko ah. The Ushers will lead you. Sige, hatod mo sa Ushers sa Children's Church. Salamat, salamat. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give the Lord a clap for feeling. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we have a harvest uh, this time. It's been a long while uh, that we have seen people come down here, right? Normally, I just need the people watching. But thank uh, God. Thank everybody. Thank you for bringing a soul to the Lord. And I hope that you will continue to do that so that we will see a harvest for the Lord. So this is first fruit celebration. Shavuot is first fruits. So we got this first fruit from the Lord. And we give Him all the glory and the honor. Palakpakan natin si Lord, please. Praise God. And now, since uh, nag-announce si Pasora a while ago, Pasora Rita, nga mukha ta og second offering, this is special offering. Kada piece sa ginoon nag-atag ta og uh, maayo or generous uh, givings sa atong ginoo, especially at this time. Let's be generous to the Lord. Let's not stop being a giver to Jesus Christ. So, take a good offering to seal your harvest. You know, first fruits offering during Shavuot, seal your harvest, seal your blessings. Okay? Gisel yuhan ang inyong mga harvest, forthcoming harvest when you give to God, especially karong Shavuot. So, thank you, ushers. Wait for everybody. Okay, kung andam na mo, tindog mo, and muanhilang diri sa atubangan. Okay. Can we all stand up? And I would like you to stretch out your hands toward our receptacles for this uh, second and special offering. Father God, we just honor you with our first fruits this morning. We honor you with our generous gift. I pray God that you will seal the harvest for your children. May you bless them, Lord God. Return everything back to them in good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. We want to thank you that you're the great provider. Bless everyone. Bless everybody who have taken an extra time and effort to give 
to you the second time. I give you glory, I give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sige po. Stay put lang. I'd like to talk to those of you who are watching. You can also participate in the second offering. Take uh, your envelope for the good uh, generous offering. You can uh, send by GCash, online banking, or uh, come here, giving your offerings unto the Lord. And the God of Israel will be the one to bless you. So I'd like to remind everybody na next week ang atong communion, supposedly today, right? First Sunday. Pero gimove natin because natay pagsaulog karong umaga, diri, o karong buntag. And then, musunod nga Domingo will be our Thanksgiving. Okay? So, mag-andam ta sa atong paghatag o thank offerings. And uh, these are token of your gratitudes to God. Right? So don't forget our, our communion and thanksgiving. Praise God. Everybody, iisa ang mga kamot. Mag-end na sa prayer. Hallelujah. Father, thank you very much for a mighty celebration. This is a long service, but we thank you for your presence. Because we are waiting for you. We were asking for your presence, still are asking, Lord to continue to abide with us. May you bless them this day. May you keep watch over everyone, especially from COVID and all its variants, from harm, from accidents, and from fire and earthquakes. Keep us all safe. And may Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yuva lift up His countenance upon you and may He grant you His shalom both now and forever. Shem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. A wonderful time to worship the Lord. Uh, mahaba lang po service because it's a celebration. It does not happen every week. God bless everybody and those of you who are watching. Thank you. And may the Spirit of God also fill you. And shalom everybody. Shalom to everyone. Hallelujah.